Hello everyone, this is Anna Hoffman with Traffic Generation Cafe and I'm here with Derek Halpern from Social Triggers, the man who teaches people how to bring in more traffic to your website and more importantly, how to increase sales with that traffic. Hi Derek, how are you? Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, pleasure is all mine. So if you're familiar with Derek, what we're going to be doing today is um, taking a look at Traffic Generation Cafe analyzing what's going on, uh, what works and what doesn't, and uh, Derek is just the man, hopefully, to tell me um, to give it straight. <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope, right? Uh, indeed. So let's, just, let's just start right at the top. Let's go to your homepage, trafficgenerationcafe.com, and let's just start right at the beginning. Okay. Now, I know we did, we had some preliminary talks right before we hopped on the recording here, but before we go ahead and jump into the tactics and the strategies behind how to actually improve the conversion rates of Traffic Generation Cafe, let's talk about what's the main goal of your site right now. What's the main goal for your site? Okay. Well, um, the main goal is uh, twofold. I would like to uh, make some money, obviously, off the traffic that I'm getting, uh, but also to build my list, uh, which, as you know, is also a very good supplemental way to uh, indirectly make money from the blog. So those are the two goals that I have in mind right now. So you want to make money directly from the blog with like advertisements and then also build the list, which is more of an indirect method. Yes. All right, well, first, I truly believe that list building is a direct method, but I understand where you're going here with the advertising plus wanting to push some products. So now that I know that, let's just talk about the first thing. When people visit Traffic Generation Cafe, if it's their first visit, they visit that welcome page that you have, right? Yes, they do. All right. I, I think that's a little aggressive. But if it's working and it's getting results, I know you said previously that it actually increased the amount of people you're getting in your list every day. If it's working, I think you should keep that. I think that's great. Since you are since you have that plug-in in place, mm -hmm. I'm not going to harangue you to put a feature box. I'm really big on feature boxes. I know you are. So with that plug-in, I'm not going to... I'm not going to annoy you about putting a feature box also on your site. Well, if, if I may, um, actually I did hit, uh, have a feature box, as you know, on my blog for a while. And what happened with that is that it was converting fairly well, but all the other opt-in forms on my blog dropped down significantly. So in the end, it was pretty much a wash with a feature box for my blog. And that's the main reason why I took it out just about a month ago and started using this plugin instead just to see if it does better. And so far, so good. All right, perfect. So let's now talk about your goals of making some more money from your site. Okay. Now. I know that you're trying to push affiliate products, so let's talk about affiliate marketing first off. Let's talk about what you can sell to your subscribers. You have, um, you're have you pushing some different marketing tools, right? And I can see that you have a link at the top of your page. Yes. Marketing tools. And when you click that link, you send people to a page with very little distractions. Yes. There's no navigation. You just kind of take people down your marketing tools. Yes. Now, I had talked with you beforehand that when people enter their email and subscribe to your list, you say that you send them one follow-up email and then they proceed to get all your live blog posts. Yes. Now, I want you to consider this. When people subscribe to your list, chances are they're a new visitor or they haven't heard of you before or they're just new and they finally decide to trust you to give, you, to give up their email address. Okay. Right? Now, since these people are new, you can't assume that they have seen your marketing tools page on your site. So okay. what I would love for you to do is after people sign up to, to your email list, they get that welcome email, the following day, hit them with another follow-up message that says, hey, just wanted to let you know, a lot, tons of people are always asking me what tools I use to run my business. I created this piece of, I created this post just for you, well not just for you, but I created this post for you showing you everything I use. I'm essentially pulling back the curtain of my business and showing you everything I use to run it. Okay. And what's going to end up happening is every new subscriber to your site is then going to be fed 
into your internet marketing tools page, which is one of your best pages on your site right now. Okay, yes. That makes sure that every new subscriber gets it. And it's also really cool because you'll find that, I mean, just me personally, people are always emailing me. Every single day of the week, I get people emailing me. What kind of camera do you use? What theme are you using? Where did you get your blogs on? They're always asking me these questions. Yes. So you're going to, it's a cool way to send them a piece of content that they absolutely want. And it's also one of your pages where there's a bunch of affiliate links, you know, so you're going to make money if they buy any of it. Okay. Now, another thing I want you to do is I know your main benefit of subscribing right now is an ebook for a search engine optimization. Yes. Like a search engine optimization ebook. I'm taking a look at your tools. I would love, since people are opting in to get a search engine optimization ebook, I would love for you to have a separate page on your site with tools related to just search engine optimization. Interesting. Okay. And what ends up happening is instead of sending them the broad based tool set, they opt in, they get that free ebook, they think you're great for giving them that free ebook. Then the follow up email, you can say, hey, as we talked about in this ebook, you need to do keyword research. Well, I want to let you know that on this page here, I list all the all of my favorite tools for mm -hmm. doing keyword research. Go check them out. Now you're looking at sending every new subscriber a targeted pitch for a product that they already want because they okay. opted in to receive that email, that, that search engine optimization. That makes sense. That's all about, it's called, uh, I've called it loads of things by now, but it's actually called channeling intent. <laughs> okay. People, they're subscribing to your list with the intent of improving their search engine optimization. You're giving them the ebook, you're satisfying that intent. Mm -hmm. The next goal is to continue with that intent, which is all about SEO. And yes. then that's when you can start feeding them more targeted sales pitches that are related to SEO. And it doesn't have to be a sales pitch completely. It could be it, it, it could be content plus pitch, like where you talk about, well, you downloaded this ebook as we talked about in this ebook about keyword research. Then you can kind of rehash mm -hmm. what you've already said in the ebook because chances are people opt into your list, they'll get the ebook, they're probably not going to read it. <laughs> that's so, true. That's true. That's your opportunity then to spoon feed them that content about keyword research and then include a small little pitch at the bottom. Now, I'm not sure how your readers are going to react to this, but it's worth testing. Sure. You never know. You might find that for every hundred emails that come in through your list, that uh, two people will buy one of the tools. Now you've got some interesting data where you know that for every hundred emails you get, two sales come through the door. Now you know what you can actually buy emails for at a profit. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. All right, so this is this is actually really interesting. I never actually talked about this on any of these site reviews before. Mostly I talk about conversion-centered design, but mm -hmm. this is more about not necessarily monetizing your website, but this is more about just maximizing the profit potential of your mm -hmm. website. And I love it because I have so many readers, as I'm sure you do too, whose main goal is eventually to make money, yet they have no idea how to do that, even with all the traffic that they get, um, like I do. So this is absolutely priceless. Cool. Now, that's the one tip for marketing tools for making some money. Now I want to talk about advertising. I'm okay. very anti-advertising. I'll know. tell you why I'm anti-advertising. A long time ago, back in like 2006, 2007, I used to run blogs that were where I would live or die based on how much money I made on ads. Mm -hmm. And it was, you might know this, but I had a celebrity gossip blog, I had a women's makeup blog, I had a fashion blog, I had an entertainment blog, a gaming blog, all these different blogs. And in 2007, I generated somewhere around 30 million hits to nice. all my sites. Mm -hmm. Now, what was funny, though, was even though my traffic got better after 2007, I made drastically more money in 2007 off of advertising than I did in 2008 because the ad rates went down. Oh, I see. When you're selling ads and using things like Google AdSense or you're selling ads to other companies, you're going to find that you're very at the you're at the mercy of the, of the ad market, mm -hmm. which is why I prefer to sell things, because when you're selling things that people truly want, you're not at the mercy of anything other than whether or not you're selling good things or not. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to make it in the ad market, 
I think you need to do a little bit better job of demonstrating the value that an ad on your site brings to a company. Okay. So it's not just about impressions, it's not just about exposure, but you want to really break it down to what value an advertiser can get. Like I was asking you in the pre-interview before this recording, what could I expect an ad to get? Like how many impressions would it get? How many clicks could I maybe get? Even though it's not specific about what could I expect from this particular ad buy. And the better you do at quantifying that for people, the more likely they're going to be interested in buying an ad from you. Okay. Now, I know you don't have to give up all your numbers. You just got to figure out the numbers that you think people would be most interested in. Mm -hmm. you know, and the best goal is to create a media kit. Do you have a media kit? Mm, no, I don't. All right, so a media kit is just simply where you just try to get some demographic data, what percentage is male, what percentage is female, try to figure out overall at income or whatnot of your audience. Okay. And more specifically, just try to quantify how many clicks people could expect. Don't quantify the clicks per se. Like, you know, you don't have to quantify the clicks because sometimes if you generate a little bit less clicks and they're expecting another amount of, you know, if they're expecting, you know, a thousand clicks and they only get 300, they're mm -hmm. going to be a little bit more upset with you. But you want to put the result on it okay, and try to create more targeted packages. Like, you can buy this ad, but if you buy these three ads and buy out all the inventory, you'll get this rate, for example. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. All right, cool. Now, is there any reason why you're using the left sidebar and not the right sidebar? I knew you were going to ask. Um, actually, yes, there is a reason. Uh, first of all, um, I, initially, my thinking was that when somebody looks at a web page, uh, naturally our eyes gravitate to the left side of uh, whatever page it is. Yep. So that's initially why I added the um, sidebar to the left. Um, but I didn't stop there. I actually did test it. What I did is that uh, for about a month, I switched it back to the right side and I tracked my opt-ins uh, from the form that is located in the sidebar and they went down uh, because of the switch. So it wasn't a significant one, but it was large enough for me to switch it back. And, you know, it's just something, that's just something um, that I heard from my readers is that it kind of differentiates my blog and uh, they like it on the left side, they're used to it. So, um, you know, I've got some personal preference reasons as well as uh, hard stats that that side converts better. All right, cool. That, that, that's perfect. Another question. Okay. Why? Here's something that I actually, I always nail people for this. That most commented, like you have a lot of stuff in your sidebar. You okay. A lot of stuff. You've got an opt-in form. You've got some advertisements. You've got your social media profiles. You've got sponsored sites. You've got most commented. You've got Anna's reviews. You've got a lot of stuff. Yes. I would try to minimize that, you know, I would try to figure out how you could potentially cut some of that down, like try to figure out what's your most ideal situation here, Okay. and promote that stuff, uh, I, I don't know what it is, like, cause, you know, you have ads, you gotta have the ads there, but there's a lot going on there, I would try to figure out the best way to at least cut down two sections. Okay. Um, actually, you probably, I mean, you've been to my blog before a few times, so um, you may have noticed that this site was completely redesigned and uh, it used to look uh, completely differently. And the reason why I redesigned it to begin with is because I found um, a, a great little tool in Google Analytics, in Page Analytics, I don't know if you've ever used it, but basically what it does is it tracks the clicks um, that people, um, wherever people click, it tra tracks those clicks and gives you the percentages of that. So that's basically what triggered um, the redesign to begin with because I, had, I used to have two navigation bars, one of them 
uh, was um, my resource pages like list building, SEO traffic, those kind of things. Um, I realized that people do not click on that, so I took it out. Um, I did see that people clicked a lot on my home link, of course, on my about page and marketing tools page. So all of those remain. And then going down to the sidebar, I used to have um, hand-picked posts that I thought people who wanted to learn more about traffic generation would want to know about. Um, you know, things that teach you the boring stuff like uh, what is direct traffic, what is search engine traffic, blah, blah, blah. Well, people rarely clicked on that. So this sidebar and what's in it right now is actually an experiment. I want to see, it's been about a month since I changed it around, and I want to see if people are clicking more on the links the way they are right now and just see what kind of click-throughs I will generate with this layout. So that's why, and I agree with you, ideally it, it's too much stuff, but I just want to see what works and what doesn't. Okay. The one thing also is you have three different social media profiles, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. Yes. I would consider focusing on one. Mm. Okay. I wouldn't... Hey, there's that expression. If you want to hit oil, you can't dig 100 one-foot holes. You got to dig one hole 100 feet deep. Seriously? <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't I do holes. know. I do know. Yes. So you're, you're kind of spreading your influence over three social networks. And what ends up happening is it looks like you have a small following on each of them. Mm-hmm which actually is bad for branding because it looks like you don't have any readers even though you're getting a thousand people a day, you know, you're getting you're getting a lot of traffic, mm -hmm. you have an impressive traffic, you have a nice blog, but you're not getting, when I see you have 700 Twitter followers or 700 people circling you on, on Google+, Plus, that could be a negative to some people, you know what I mean? I do know. Actually, most of my readers know that I used to have 130 plus thousand followers on Twitter until Twitter shut me down a month ago. So that's why it's there because most of my readers do know. It's one of the most read posts on my uh, blog actually, why Twitter shut me down and what to do about it. So anyway, that's why Twitter is there. But I completely really? do get the point. Yes, they did. <laughs> Twitter shut you down. Yeah. Huh? can't get it back? You can't get your account back? Um, no, I tried. They basically, um, I, I tried for about a month and then I gave up because I decided, you know, it's a waste of time. Maybe I might be able to get it back, but it's just not worth my time. And I decided to start, you know, start from scratch. So it is what it is. Um, I'm trying to rebuild what I've had. Obviously, Google Plus, with all the things that are going on right now, is probably a good choice for just that one social network to focus on. I haven't quite decided. What What's your opinion on that? I hate social media. I like email lists. I do too. I'm so glad you said that because it's such a waste of time. But our audience is on social media. So, I, I mean, can't ignore it, I don't think. But just because they're on it doesn't mean you have to be on it. Like, you could be on it, but you don't have to be, they don't have to follow you. You know, they can find you. I mean, my Twitter account, I, I use Twitter to to make fun of things, essentially. You know, I don't really use Twitter for anything other than me to run my mouth in public. <laughs> but that's okay. why I don't really promote it that heavily. And people still find me on Twitter. You know, occasionally what you do is instead of dedicating all that screen real estate to promoting your social media profiles, you send blasts of people. So, like, occasionally I'll do something like, hey, everyone, I'm going to have a discussion on fate on my Facebook profile. Come over and we'll chat. Okay. And I'll send everyone there all at once from email to Facebook. Or sometimes I'll say, hey, I just put these four tweets on Twitter. Go over on Twitter. Follow me. So instead of having it on my real estate all of the time, I send bursts of people there okay. once in a while. That, that makes sense. That great for me so far. But it's a little bit controversial. Not everybody does it that way. You know, I, you know, if I could cut out social media completely, I would because, as I said, to me it's such a waste of time. But right now, probably about 30% of my traffic comes from social media as yeah. referral traffic. So, you know, 30% is a big chunk to just ignore. So I kind of, 
you know, I try to figure out how to fit it in my schedule. And of course, as you know, that's another question that all readers have. How do you do it? You know, how, how, what am I supposed to do? So many things to do, so little time. So this is actually a great tip from you, Derek. I really love it. The fact that you send, um, you know, a bunch of people at one time, it makes complete yeah. sense. So, uh, you know, I, I'll definitely consider doing it that way. All right, cool. So it's worth testing. Yes. Now, I know we kind of segued away from advertising to social media real quick, but now I want to go back to advertising. Okay. When trying to sell ads on your site, having blank ads everywhere looks like nobody is buying ads. And if nobody is buying ads, why should I buy an ad? So what you should always do is even when you're not, when you don't have inventory available, you should put some house inventory up. Like, mm -hmm. You put a banner for an affiliate link. You could do whatever you want, but always have that filled. Yes. And then right below the ad, you could have a little link that says advertise here. Much like if you go to like the New York Times.com, you'll see that they have, uh, they'll always have underneath one of their ads saying uh, advertise here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if I can. Yeah, so if you go to like one of their articles, It'll be the big leaderboard ad at the top, and then right below it says advertise on the nytimes.com. Yeah. You could do something similar. Oh, so it makes so much sense. Because, mm -hmm. you know, people don't want to buy ads where no one else is buying ads, so you could run affiliate links in the meantime. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. And yet, it's been sitting on my to do list for a while now. So, you know, now it goes to my must to do list because I, you know, you're absolutely right. No argument from me. All right, good. Now, so we talked about how to funnel people to your marketing tools page by doing this to sign up process. Mm -hmm. We talked about potentially creating a media kit. We talked about instead of overly promoting your social media profiles, do it in bursts. We talked about filling your existing ad space with affiliate links and then advertise here. Now let's talk about the overall, I want to call this like the engine for conversions, right? Let me talk about how this works. People likely find your site by visiting one of your content pages first, whether they come there from social media or they come there from search engines. Yes. All right. After they're done with that, after they're done with your content, your next goal is to figure out how to channel these people to pages that convert. Because while content is great, at generating a lot of traffic, it's inherently poor at converting that traffic into sure. subscribers and sales. So, do you have, for example, any opt-in pages on your site? What opt-in pages do you have available? Um, well, first of all, I do have resource pages um, that are basically um, a collection of posts on the topic. I'm trying to bring it up on the screen right now. Yeah, I have like SEO traffic 101, for example. Yes, that's one of those um, kind of pages. So as you can tell, um, there, there is an opt-in form here, actually two, as a matter of fact, all the way at the bottom as well. So, um, you know, I always try to mention those resource pages in my content pages, as well as on after blog posts themselves, as you can probably see, I have this um, bio box, which I recently figured out that I can actually put an opt-in form in there. So I don't know how it never occurred to me, but um, so it's here. It doesn't convert greatly, but it does convert some. So I do capture some of the traffic that just read my posts and is looking for something else to do. Okay. Do you have any clear-cut opt-in pages. Like, here, go to socialtriggers.com, and on socialtriggers.com, go to the up top right where it says free updates. Click on that. Hold on. I'm just trying to kill two birds with one stone, and I'm being too slow with it because I'm not wearing my glasses. But anyway, so um, let's see. Free updates. You see the top I got right? you. Yes. That's a, that's a straight-up opt-in page. Now, okay. let me tell you about this free updates link. I thought free updates was a very pointless thing to do. I didn't think that that would actually have any effect. Mm -hmm. But by adding a free updates link to my main navigation bar, that page 
quickly soared to one of the top pages on my site. Mm. Now, here's what's interesting. All I did was have that link there, and I have another link in the homepage feature box. But when you have an opt-in page like this, you can work a link to your free updates page within your content. Sure. And you want to do that. You want to definitely do that. You want to start working. Not only do you want to link to resource pages, you want to link to opt-in pages. Mm -hmm. You want to have a you want to have an opt-in page that's just regular free updates. You can have another opt-in page where you say, hey, if you give me your email, download, uh, you'll get this free ebook. Then when you're writing content, you could say, you all know about the power of SEO and you can embed a link. If you want to learn more, go download this ebook. And you start embedding links to opt-in pages within your content. And what ends up happening is your content is doing the work. Your content is generating the traffic. When people start to read your content, you're going to start funneling the traffic to the right pages to convert. Mm -hmm. Resource pages are part of it, but you also need opt-in pages. Opt-in pages convert better than resource pages. Yes. I mean, that opt-in page right there converts. I don't remember, the last time I looked, it was well over 30%. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what it's at right now. I haven't looked at it in a, in a long time, but it was well over 30% there, whereas a resource page might convert at 5 to 10%. Mm -hmm. So you want to send people with resource pages, but 30% compared to 5 to 10%, that's a huge Mm -hmm. huge difference. I do actually have an opt-in page. Uh, I was trying to find it while I was talking to you and uh, I forgot the URL, believe it or not. But anyway, the, the problem with that is that I do mention it in posts, but I don't have any direct link to it like you do. So uh, for the most part, unless it's in the post, um, it's also ranking on on the search engines for free SEO reports, so that's I, I get some traffic um, that way as well. But yes, for the most part, you know, I, if for some reason, it never occurred to me to actually add the tab that says free updates or something, free SEO or something, anything. So thanks. <laughs> it's funny how that works. I mean, it's so obvious. It took me almost a year to put that there myself. Mm. But I'm, you know, I'm loving the results that it's generating. Oh, I'm sure, and I'm sure I'll be loving it all the way as well. So, yeah, th great tip. Thanks, Derek. All right, cool. Now, let me take a look. I think that you're making, let's go back to advertisements right okay. now. When most people start, get started with trying to sell ads on their site, they think that they need a lot of ad space. Okay. When you have more ads on your site, the value of each ad goes down. Mm -hmm. I would focus on one type of ad unit to start. Okay. Because the amount of traffic you have, instead of trying to sell four squares, a leaderboard, then an after post ad at the bottom of your post, that's a lot of inventory to sell. Mm -hmm. Instead, I would focus on filling inventory as opposed to having inventory. Okay, makes sense. You know what I mean? Yes. As demand increases, you could potentially increase the amount of inventory that you have, but for right now, I would focus on filling inventory. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds like a great tip. Anything else you see there? I mean, honestly, everything else is going pretty well. I mean, I, I really like how your site's designed. You've got a lot of the high converting opt-in forms, sidebar, footer, you've got the that welcome page. If you put the free updates in your in your navigation, that's gonna okay. be great. Sounds uh, good. I hate that ad. It links from PR9 sites. Is that an ad? Yes it is. It's just I hate that ad. It's I know so spammy looking. I know. I mean I am sorry, I am sorry if I just up one of your advertisers. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. No, I, I, I sort of committed to it before I saw what it looked like. Big mistake. Um, so yeah, I know. No, it's a great ad. I mean, I just be careful. So going forward, try to make sure your ads are looking very high quality and professional. Yes. That ad probably gets a lot of clicks. They probably love that ad, but it just my my spam meter is like going off through the wall. And I'm sorry if I just got you in trouble with that. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. All right. Cool. Um, everything else is great. I mean, you're doing a lot of things right. There's just a few opportunities, c clearing down your sidebar, adding a few links here and there, and I think you're pretty much set. Okay. I think what you're going to find, though, when you do that, when you implement the marketing tools, link into your funnel mm -hmm. like that, and start actually having an autoresponder sequence in place, you're going to see a lot more sales come in. Okay. 
that oh, makes one a lot. Thing, yes, one yes. After people subscribe to your email list and they confirm their email, they go to a page where they can download the ebook. Yes. I would put an affiliate link on that page. You know, like, oh, here's your free ebook that you're promised. By the way, this is all about SEO. Here are some SEO tools that you might be interested in too, and have a little subset below, and those can be affiliate links. Interesting. Okay. It's Good. Worth testing. I know. Good idea. As you said, you know, a lot of these ideas are so simple, yet until somebody comes in and says, hey, why aren't you doing it? A lot of times it just doesn't occur to us. So um, thank you so much, Derek. I so appreciate all your help, all your input. I hear you on pretty much all of it. So, yeah, I've got a lot of work to do ahead of me. It's funny how that works. Simple ideas usually work the best. Like, for example, if I didn't want my hair to look crazy, I could use a brush. But, you know, not a brush. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, to me, you look great no matter what. So thanks again so much. Um, everyone, Derek Halpern from SocialTriggers.com. Um, thank you again for doing this for us. And I'll talk to you soon, Derek. I right, see you later.